Gems Farm is a family-owned and operated hop farm in Carlisle. Check out what goes into growing these flavorful nuggets. We actually planted our first plants back in 2017. When we originally bought this property in uh, 2008, we knew we wanted to do something with it, we just didn't know what. Um, we tried everything from asparagus to grapes to fruit trees and eventually a friend of ours connected us with someone who was growing hops and they decided, you know, they gave us some to try and they absolutely loved the soil so that's why we decided to go this route. I absolutely had no knowledge of hops when I got into it. There's such a steep learning curve. I'm learning from day to day still. One of the big things is um, pest control and disease. Uh, this area we're really susceptible to like downy mildew. Um, got issues with like potato leaf hoppers and stuff like that, but just trying to keep that kind of stuff at bay is a, a huge deal. What's the uh, idea of growing weather for? Uh, not Pennsylvania. It's definitely not the ideal place to grow them, but we can, we can grow them, but you just gotta put a lot more emphasis into it and just pay attention to what's going on in the fields every day. We're finding like this, actually the variety we're sitting here right now between the Triple Pro and our Comet, they absolutely thrive in this environment. We have a few other varieties, they do well, just they don't grow as well as they possibly could somewhere else. Right now we have Comet, Triple Pearl, uh, Tahoma, Mount Hood, and Newport. We can start with Comet and our Triple Pearl. They have similar profiles for the most part. They're more used for aromatics, vice bittering. We have everything compared to like grapefruit, citrusy type profiles. Then we get into more aromatics with Mount Hood and Tahoma. Again, more citrusy than anything else. And then our last, which we have, is our Newport, which is a bittering agent. But some people have picked up on that one anywhere from like a balsamic vinegar smell to a dank type aroma, almost a pot smell off of it. So, and we have seen, because I know there's a couple other farms that we work with who've gotten the same varieties that we have from the exact same uh, uh, greenhouses, totally different profiles they've had in aromas. And kind of goes back to the whole terroir thing about the soil makes a difference in what you actually get from a plant. We probably took about a year and a half to two years of planning to be able to get a, a layout for how we were gonna plant the uh, plants. Not just that, but how we were gonna put the poles in, how we were gonna set up our irrigation. And then in planting the plants themselves, we have over 3,400 plants and they have to each be individually planted by hand. Luckily they're perennials, so we don't have to plant them again unless we need to replace them. Basically the way our season works here, about February, March time frame, we'll start coming out here and paying attention to what the plants are doing in the ground. Shortly after that, once we got an idea how things are going, we literally come through and either physically cut everything back or use a chemical to burn all the, everything back down to the ground. And at that point, we'll start the process of hanging core, which is the uh, coconut twine that we have that the uh, plants climb up. Usually it's just my wife and myself. Uh, sometimes our daughters are available to help, but it could take us close to two weeks to do all of it. After that, inspecting the irrigation system to make sure you know anything that was out over the winter is prepared and ready to go. Usually we have issues with rabbits or whatever eating into it and we'll have spring leaks. The next uh, labor intensive thing is training the plants on how to climb up the uh, core. After that, it's just every day coming out, monitoring how the plants are growing, if there's disease, if I need to irrigate, do they need more, more fertilizer, that kind of stuff. And then, of course, right about a week or so before uh, it's time to harvest is the next big step, just getting everything ready. When we harvest them, we cut the base, we cut the top, and then we actually have a harvester that we uh, run them through. The harvester will hook up the bottom end of the uh, plant to a chain, and it pulls it through and just pops you know, the hops off of it, and then they get sorted out, and we bag them up. Fresh hop shelf life is very short. If someone's doing a fresh hop beer, we like them to pick them up within about 12 hours to 24 hours. We do have a cooler. We can keep them in for temporary storage, but they, as soon as you pick them off the vine, they start going, you know, bad. So in that point, we uh, we put them in our oast, which is basically a oversized dehydrator, and then we dry them down to about 8%, you know, moisture, 
And we do have the capability here on the farm of also pelletizing hops. Pelletized hop is basically taking ground up hops and forming them into a pellet. It looks like rabbit feed or pellets that you put in your stove. So once they're pelletized, we'll put them in a nitrogen purge vacuum bag and refrigerate them again, and they can last five years if taken care of. We are USDA certified pelletizing facility. As far as I know, we're one of two in the state. Most of our customers have found us through their social media or word of mouth. We've had local breweries use them for the fresh ales. Free Will, they had done a, a freshie the past two years where they've used a combination of two of our fresh hops at one time, which is kind of tricky to try and find two that are ripe, to, ripe at the same time to harvest, but um, they've done that. Um, most recently, we did the Adapt and Overcome, which uh, I guess there was a total of 20 breweries involved with that. So we understand that that took, had a very good reception. There they used our, uh, our Comet for that. And then just recently we were at the uh, Millworks um, with Jeff Musselman over there. He's doing a single malt, single hop with the Comet also. One of the coolest things as a hop farmer is getting to see a beer that has you know, hops grown at your farm next to it on the menu. That's probably the best part.